Welcome back to CIS Podcast. I'm your host, Callie. I'm a junior, and I'm the lead of the media department. Uh, I'm Lucas, and I'm also a junior, and I'm from the CAD department. So, today we're going to be talking about CAD and Lucas's department. So, Lucas, when did you join the team? I joined the team my freshman year, no, my sophomore year, and I started out in build, and I, uh, our previous CAD lead was hosting classes on CAD, and I was kind of interested with a couple friends. Uh, we all went to the classes. I was particularly interested, and I, I grew a liking to that. Yeah. Um, so I joined the team as a sophomore. Um, I never really switched departments. I was always on uh, media. When I joined marketing and media, we're both one department, and then throughout the year, we kind of split into two. So I never um, really explored the other departments. I've found my fit and kind of stuck with it. But yeah, that's how we joined the team. Um, So how did you become interested? Like, did you have any prior experience or anything like that? uh, There is some classes where we dealt with CAD software, like uh, ComTech, we dealt with Mm -hmm. CAD software mechanical design I took this year and that has a lot of Fusion 360 and uh, those classes really got me interested Uh, I tried it out actually on the build Saturdays and I that's what really when I got hooked because I I liked uh, making the CAD and then seeing it being built in the build room rather than actually building it Do you want to explain what Fusion is for those who don't know? Because I don't know. Fusion 360 is a CAD software. It's one of the more popular ones. It's more simple. Uh, SolidWorks is the industry standard, but uh, Fusion 360 is more like the student edition of that. So um, let's briefly go over CAD from a person who's on the media department. I have no idea what CAD is. I actually just learned what CAD stood for, Computer Aided Design. That's correct. So let's go into that because I have no idea. Well, yeah, Fusion 360 is a way, uh, it is a like part of computer aided design. There's uh, um, different softwares, there's Illustrator, there's uh, Onshape, which we used last year, and that was a web-based, and it was nice but slow. So. It has its pros, it had its cons, uh, but the speed was what uh, kind of made us switch back to Fusion 360. Uh, anything else I can put in that? Uh, what is your, what's the hardest aspect of CAD? The hardest aspect, uh, it's very, uh, it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you spend a lot of hours, I remember, See, with this year's challenge, we don't have many uh, new things except for this new innovation challenge that we could possibly get into later. But uh, last year was when the hours really came in because we were making the new robot and uh, like we got a new thing every day and that would take us the whole day. And that was just a little part of the robot. So every Saturday we were putting in uh, from 8 a.m. to... I don't know, sometimes went to like 7, 8 o'clock at night, so 11 to 12 hours. So you're currently working on the Innovation Challenge. Do you want to talk about that? I only know a little bit about it, but for the people that are unaware of what ours is. Well, the goal of the Innovation Challenge was to uh, increase or make someone's health better mentally Mm -hmm. or physically, and we did that by uh, Minnesota is like the top producer for turkeys, like you know, turkeys for your Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were thinking chickens at the start, but the turkeys were more practical. And uh, our uh, what we were going to do with our robot was have us pick up dead chickens for the farmers. So they are mm-hmm. dead chickens originally, but now it's dead turkeys. Because picking up dead bodies, uh, you know, mentally, that's probably not the best for you, picking up corpses every day. And physically, exactly. they, they let off ammonium and different chemicals that can cause physical harm. Uh, one of the people we interviewed, uh, their mother had done it every day, and she had developed uh, some, uh, what was it, 
uh, I think it was, I don't know, it was a disease with your bones from breathing in all the ammonium, and uh, she grew pretty fragile because of that. So. Um, the innovation yeah. challenge, it's very um, unique. I would never think that the dead turkeys or chickens were even a really problem. Yeah. Do you know who came up with it or had uh, the input on it? Ryan Swanson and a buddy of his okay. from college, from, from the college he went to, uh, they were the ones that kind of started it all. They had the ideas, and they brought it. They, they actually had the idea before the innovation challenge was brought to them, and then they thought this would be a perfect way to apply it. And uh, they both help us out a bunch. Ryan Swanson helps the business and the CAD team. He's very good at uh, CAD in general. Uh, yeah, uh, the innovation, uh, when he brought it up to the innovation challenge, we thought of a couple different, we were trying to think of different things we could do with that mm -hmm. but that I mean that one kind of just topped it all we thought it was a brilliant idea yeah that is a it's a really great idea definitely something that can benefit people around our area especially mm -hmm. because we're a small town in you know the midwest um so who's in on the innovation challenge besides the people you've listed so far well we have Nadine from programming mm -hmm. uh she does and her team uh I mean, everyone from my CAD team has done a part on the Innovation Challenge. Uh, the business side, like Sydney, she had, has a big part in making the presentation and uh, actually doing that. And then, of course, Ryan. Yep, he's a huge part of it. That's basically our, our team. We didn't get uh, too many people from Build. I think we'll just kind of toss them the, what we need made. Mm -hmm. I don't think they want to get too in depth with the presentations and stuff. So are the roles in the innovation challenge, is it kind of everyone working together? Because I've seen um, many Zoom calls yep. and meets yep. with everyone. So is it like more of a everything, everyone's doing the same thing or is it more people branch off and do different things yeah, it's throughout? Definitely, it's definitely more branching off, but then we have uh, kind of those Google meets where we mm -hmm. uh, kind of talk about what we've done that week and I mean, they all relate to each other. Like, if I got something done in CAD, that gives Nadine another job. Uh, yes, same thing with Nadine. If she figures out a new camera she wants to add it, I add that to the CAD. So it's it's working together. It's just uh, in your own portions, kind of. It's definitely um, innovation cannot happen in isolation, yeah. I'll tell you that. Motto right there. Um, so what does a Build Saturday look like for your department? Um, okay. So, like, my department... It's very, um, it's not as planned. Mm -hmm. We kind of go throughout the day. Um, and ours definitely doesn't take as long as yours. We're a bit more minor. Um, so I have definitely seen you guys, you've, you've been in the room, you sit in um, the computer lab for hours and you guys do not come out. So let's talk yeah. about that. Uh, this year has definitely been different, but uh, we haven't been able to put in, or haven't had to put in as many hours just because our main season robot doesn't need that much work, but uh, this has definitely helped us have something to do. And our day starts out with talking to build and seeing what uh, projects like the pit is something we worked on, which uh, we call the super pit. Uh, it's it's a it's a big project. We finished a good chunk of it last year, but then you know COVID happened, everything shut down. So yep. we picked right back up with it this year, and it's going along nice. And then. Uh, yeah, build usually gives us a new job on the robot and a new job on the uh, chicken robot if they want anything made. So usually we end up with like three separate jobs and we try and divide that in between our department. So have three separate mini groups usually containing about two people and work mainly like all day on that. So our team recently got a new machine. Do you want to reveal that? We've talked about it a little bit before. We posted about it just a little bit. Do you want to go into depth with that? We got a CNC router, mm -hmm. which can uh, allow us to fabricate our own parts instead of having to sent out and, uh, you know, ta taking that week or however long it takes, which, I mean, that'll fast track us on any manufacturing process that we have to do and we've actually designed a lot of our robots or our new robot 
parts and the chicken robot is basically all going to be designed on that using sheet metal. Uh, so yeah, that CNC router is really going to help our team. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know what it looks like, it's just a big table and then it has like a drill that goes around. And it's very odd looking. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very um, Do we have any cons with that machine so far? I know there's been a lot of yeah. work on it, trying yep. to get it up and going. It's taken a lot longer to set up than we mm -hmm. thought. Uh, the cons, it's pretty pricey. Uh, these new bits that we were just talking about today, they're going to be pretty expensive and Right now, they're just they're waiting for something to fail because they know there's, we know there's going to be failures with that and figuring out what parts are going to be, have to be commonly replaced. So what the, what the costs will be with that, but I think the the pros will outweigh the cons on that. Yeah. Well, that's great. Very good improvement. Um, so let's talk about your future career. You want to be an engineer, right? Engineer, yep. And any certain type of engineer, there's a lot of engineers um, out there. Yep. Yep. Um, Mechanical engineer. Uh, I'd also love to do a little bit of welding on the side. I'm mm -hmm. really enjoying welding. But uh, I'd like uh, to be a mechanical engineer for my main job. Uh, that just goes straight along with CAD. It's yep. Kind of what you do. So you want to use CAD in your future, oh, future sure. career? Oh, yep. yep. So definitely robotics. Being in robotics will continue to help you after you graduate high school yep, and go sure. on to your life. So that's great. That's, that's great. really good. Yep. Um, so, do you plan on going to college after you graduate? I do plan on going to college. A lot, most engineers do. It's pretty... Mm -hmm. uh, the college I've been deciding... Like, I haven't made a big decision. I've been thinking somewhere in North and South Dakota, one of the Dakotas, uh, NDSU. We just talked to some people from there, and they seem like they're getting some new additions to their college for uh, not just engineering, just, like, manufacturing, mm -hmm. getting into the trades. So, you want to be a mechanical engineer, what do, is there something you want to specifically specialize on? Uh, I like the fabrication of, mm -hmm. like, small parts, like nuts, bolts, uh, I think it'd be really cool to get in one of those kind of industries. They make a, they make a lot of money for, uh, and there's a lot of local businesses for that too, and getting involved with local businesses is always good. That, um... Occupation is really interesting because as kind of like a normal everyday person, I would never think, like look at like a bolt or a nut and be like, this was designed by someone. Like I yeah. really wouldn't think that. And now that someone actually wants to do that, it kind of yeah. opens my eyes a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a pretty complicated business over there. Uh, there's a lot more thought that goes into those, just those little parts, but uh, then what do you think? So let's talk about school. So with actually well distance learning. So COVID has kind of been inevitable. Like we're, there's not much we can do about it. And I think our team's actually doing a great job. For sure. We're um, at the beginning, we were really confused and we were like, when are we gonna start? When are we gonna see each other? And we kind of, at least me, I kind of thought that there wasn't gonna be a season because there was just no news. We had no updates. Um, the app we used to contact on is Slack, and there was just nothing posted on Slack, maybe like once a month. And so that it's great that we started up again. Uh, we usually, um, so prior to COVID, we definitely had a lot more people in the building. And now with COVID, some people can't come in. Uh, we also couldn't get as much exposure out to join our team because students weren't in the school kind of seeing our posters because we post them out throughout the school saying like, come and learn about robotics. But I think we've definitely done a great job and it's kind of going back to normal. I mean, minus the masks that fog up yeah. um, our safety glasses. That's yeah. probably one of the worst things. As a glasses where um, I'm used to it, but it's not, it's not fun, I'll tell you that. But. Um, Distance learning, I really don't do much um, Zoom calls out of school, but with your innovation challenge, you do that. And I'm, do you call with your department also? Uh, we did, We started calling with our department. Uh, we plan Tuesdays, Thursdays, but you know, since this season, we don't get a new challenge. The same thing over again. We don't have, we don't really need those Tuesdays, Thursdays. Saturdays usually encompass all we need mm -hmm. for the week. Uh, 
except for like independent work. Uh, yeah, we don't. We meet on Google Meet with more Ryan Swanson on the mm-hmm. Innovation Challenge and our department reaching out, not so much within our department. Yeah. So has um, not being able to meet in person been a struggle, or have you guys just made it through it? Ryan, uh, or basically any, anyone that's had a video call, uh, has been pretty used to it. Uh, mm-hmm. Like that meeting with NDSU, they were very, uh, very professional with the Zoom meeting. So it's it's almost like meeting in person. We've everyone's gotten used to it. Ryan Swanson's been able to come in a couple times, which has been great. Uh, he's a big help with the Innovation Challenge. I don't think it's put too much of a hold on our department because we're m- mostly digital. Like, mm-hmm. if say we were like overburdened one week, it'd be all of us have our own PCs and we could hop on just as easy as hopping on in, on a Saturday. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, so, in distance learning for school, um, do you enjoy it? Are you someone that enjoys it? Personally, um, I I don't mind it. Yeah, I I'm pretty like toss and turn because I usually say I don't like it but now next trimester I might do it because yeah I'm the opposite um so this trimester which is second trimester for us um I chose to go all distance and I enjoy it I think it's kind of fun you know like the comfort of being in your own home eating food throughout the classes um don't really like turning on my camera at 8 a.m in the morning because I just woke up at like 7 50 that's not fun but Kind of just like being in my own house, it's pretty fun. But now for third trimester, I think I need a little more social interaction. So I plan on going back fully for third trimester. Yeah, mine's kind of been the opposite, yeah. Uh, Well, uh, during the like online stuff, usually my demons come out and you know, you finish your first class early, you should be working on the homework, I fall right back to sleep. See, I, yeah, I feel that. I don't usually go back to sleep. But, um, yeah, when you get out pretty early, because, I mean, if you're in school, if your class is done, usually it's just, oh, do your homework, teacher's watching you, read a book or something. But when you're at home and you can just click end call, you either go to sleep, like I used to do trimester one, I would fall right back asleep. But now I just do just random things throughout the day. Like, I'll be cleaning my room, just waiting for the next class to begin, which is, I guess, kind of yeah, productive. That's good, yeah. But I definitely lose track of time, and I'm like, oh, I am 10 minutes late to my class right now. Um, I think my hardest part is keeping up with the class times, especially for our school, because um, we kind of went through many learning models, mm-hmm. and we're still going through learning models. Um, So what our school does is we have, it's Mondays and Wednesdays is the beginning of the alphabet. Yep. And that's my last name. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays are the other side of the alphabet by last name, which I would be on those days. And then our Fridays, which are different, is um, you would think kind of just everyone online, which is true, we do do that. But we're cut out at 12.15, which is, it's it's great actually. But um, we're technically supposed to be in school till 2.55, our normal end time. But right when 12.15's up, I'm just, I'm not doing homework. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm going on with my weekend. Yeah. So it's definitely been hard to get a gist on the times because at one point, um, for a few weeks, we ended at 12.15 every day. Oh, yeah. And that was kind of good but yeah. at the same time no one ever really did their homework when they were supposed no. to yeah they reserved that time for after twelve fifteen. you're supposed to stay on until 12 15 or two fifty five mm-hmm. to meet with your teachers and kind of get uh yeah be able to ask questions but nobody <laughs> yeah i never met did. with any teachers i don't think i did <laughs> once yeah no um, it's definitely a lot of learning models and um it's definitely uh been it's been challenging because I, they're all, like the times are usually close because before I remember I had started my third block at 9.40 and now I started at 10.50. And sometimes I'll be ready to hop on that call and I'll be an hour early. And I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. So um, I think the hardest part for me is just getting used to the schedule. But I know other students struggle with doing the homework and missing assignments and stuff because I mean when you're at home you don't have a teacher kind of up in your face telling you you got to turn in this you got to turn in that 
So, um, do you struggle with that at all? I don't struggle with the turning in things. I'm just That's more... That's good. I'm just, like, see, you're a little bit productive in being <laughs> I, uh, I'm pretty not productive. Sleepy time. Sleepy time. I'll try... The reason I want to do it next trimester is... Is it for I, sleepy time? Not for sleepy time. <laughs> okay. I have a job. Oh, that, okay. Uh, yep. I do have a job. No, I mean, I agree yeah. with that. Um, because yeah. for me, I have... Okay, technically, I do have a fifth period, but um, I'm not able to do the things because it's kind of a hands-on period. So I actually go to my job during my school hours. Uh, so that's what's great. But now that I'm going back, I'm getting cut hours because... I don't have that hour anymore. So yeah. job definitely that's been a good that's been a positive with the distance mm -hmm. is that you can just go to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be able to go to work during distance. <laughs> but I do uh just managing school online is easier when you have a job. Mhm. Mm or uh, I'm saying it's more the other way around. Man imagining a job is yep, easier when you're yep. uh online because you you get all your homework digitally uh instead of like I'm sure when we go back teachers that are more prone to handing out papers, we'll start doing that again. Yeah. yeah. I'm a paper person, are you? Um, I don't have the best handwriting. Is that it? That's I have it. terrible handwriting too, but I, you know, when distance learning started when I was a sophomore, I actually thought it was great. Like everyone thought it was great at first because they're like two weeks off and then we're going to be learning from home. And everyone's like, yes. And then, you know, like a month in and you're like, this sucks. I but I, I hated the, um, I hate writing on the iPad. I think it's terrible. And I definitely like writing on paper. So that's been, I, I used to print everything out mm -hmm. actually, but um, I can't do that anymore. There's way too many things to print out. Yeah, I just type all my homework now. I can't really. Yeah, typing, typing is easier. I wish that um, I had a computer. I actually don't have a computer at home. Mm -hmm. I wish I did. Yeah, it helps a lot with that online. Yeah, no, it's, done. it's definitely been a wild year, and I think everyone can say that about 2020. I don't know anyone who had a subtle 2020. Yeah. There's been tons of changes from, you know, like, everyone, like, the lowest grade levels to college students. I actually feel worse for, you know, like, um, the seniors last year, um, which I was, I was pretty close with the seniors last year, especially the ones on the team, yeah. and I felt very bad for them because it was kind of like – Especially the ones on the team because they were expecting to go to Worlds again. Yeah. And those competitions, yeah, that was a really downer that yeah. it just kind of just like pack up your stuff and, um, you know, turn in for the season. Yeah. That was definitely, um, it was a wild year because was it your first year? That was my year? first year. Yep. Yeah. That kind of shook up our team a little bit yeah. because that was my first year. I'd only been to one competition, but now I'm yep. a lead this year. So yep. I didn't That's get as same much. With me. <laughs> I didn't get as much experience as. Mm -hmm the leads did see their first year yeah there's still things that i didn't even know existed about robotics mm -hmm. because i was not in um ftc oh, or yeah. anything before i kind of just joined yeah and there's a bunch of things that i don't even know about and i think if i got the rest of last year i definitely would have been more set for this year more prepared yeah. but then you know covid you can't prepare for anything is what we realized uh, so, yeah, it's definitely been yeah. something. Luckily for design, I guess, the, uh, like, me not getting the full year, it didn't affect that much because, you know, all design happens before the first competition. So that did help. But uh, still, some of the... Uh, I'm going to take on scouting as well once. Yeah, let's uh, talk about scouting. I had no idea scouting existed until our first composition. Yeah. Composition. Competition. The, when Jack handed me an iPad and he mm -hmm. goes, keep track of these things. And I'm look. or was it an iPad? It's like yeah, a little, it iPad. Yep, little, it's this iPad. little iPad. And I was like, what? I was so confused. And everyone else is like, they're really into it. And they're like writing things down. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Yeah. So let's go into scouting. Okay. So, uh, I wanted to take on scouting because the way Jack set it up last year was perfect. It was, uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. It did have its flaws, but it was also our first time doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, it'll take a little bit of practice, but basically we have an iPad, and for each match, one person is per robot, and you go and document what that robot accomplishes during that match. So yep. we have every every match that each robot plays, we have documented. So say 
uh, during the first say on a two day competition the first day we get all that information we can go over it that night and know exactly what to expect the next day which works out great and it actually helped us a lot when it came to uh, seeing what team we want to be picked with or what team we need to pick mm -hmm. yeah so that's kind of why I want to take on scouting uh, so yeah. you you want to do scouting some for this year is for what this you're year if we have competition do you have yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna be hopeful and say that we are having yes. competitions um, what do you have any ideas for scouting that you want to bring um, uh, maybe uh, I'm gonna try and limit the question the questions that we had last year oh, it there was a was lot so many so many that <laughs> There was yeah, so many. Yeah, so a lot of the information came back a little bit fuzzy, a lot of different. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we had more people than there were robots on the field, so sometimes we had doubled up, and sometimes yep. the information came out. Like, of two people on the same robot, it came out way different. Yeah, there's definitely some human error yeah, definitely with human that error. that we can definitely solve. Yeah. But um, yeah. I already know that if I would... I actually, when I was told to scout, um, I wasn't able to. I had to record the next match, but... Um, if I was scouting, I definitely, I would be the one that has drastic results. Completely yeah. nothing that happened just because I was so confused. The robots just moved so fast to me mm -hmm. that I'm like, I will, I'll be watching. Because um, last year was my first competition I've ever been to. I'm fairly still new with robotics. And I was kind of, I was sitting there in awe because I was just like, there's so much going on and I'll be trying to track one robot and I'll think I'm watching the same one, but really I'm on a whole different one. It's, yeah, it's a very fast paced thing. And then especially when they would switch between um, matches, mm -hmm. very fast paced. Yeah. So I've definitely, I've gotten a hang of it now, yeah. but I mean, if we don't have a competition, which hopefully we will, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of sucks it's kind of yeah. like a it feels kind of like a it feels like this whole thing we're doing right now is just a pre pre-season yeah it's so weird because we kind of really have nothing to yeah. the, plan for yeah the weird part is 90 percent of the stuff we're doing right now doesn't have to like doesn't do specifically with the actual season yeah it's really wrapping up yeah. last season yeah. so <laughs> just months finished, after as soon as we finish wrapping up and say they say we're not having competitions for the next three or four months what are we going to do we do have some more plans for the robot but you know you can't do too much to a robot that it it, fair, it did pretty well last year we yeah did, i think it did great i yeah. was very um was a proud of, of us unfortunate things that happened during that uh grand yep. works but uh besides that our robot did farewell and uh it did good well this has been a definitely interesting episode i've learned a lot i think i just my brain's kind of taking everything and I'm kind of sponging it all up right now. So um, thank you for watching our second episode of our second season. Uh, we will see you next time.